My message today is <clears throat> while America slept, and I'm going to begin reading with verse 1 of Jeremiah 7. <clears throat> the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your harm or your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye still murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people, Israel. Father, Today, I pray that these words would find a resting place in our hearts. I pray that we would remove the shield of defense against allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and do His work, His miraculous work of conviction and drawing men and women under the throne of heaven. Father, we have trusted in lying people. We have trusted in Men and women who should have told the truth, but yet they have kept it for their own personal gain. I pray today that you would open our eyes, open our ears, that we would hear the spiritual word that you have for your people today in Jesus' name. Amen. Today our nation finds itself in perhaps the greatest threat to our national security in our, in our history. Fear grips the hearts of so many and we hear people say, well, we'll get through this. We always do. After all, we're Americans. Well, my message has to do with the answer we have as children of God. Jesus said, my peace I give, not as the world giveth, give I thee. And let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Child of God, do not be afraid. If you seek God, if we turn from our wickedness, God will hear from heaven and will heal our land. Today, however, I feel very much like Jeremiah, who rebuked the false prophets and the false security because the people had not repented. They had not changed their ways. The worst thing that can happen to our nation is that when we get through this specter that has ravished our lands, that we find that we haven't changed our ways at all. The word emanating from our pulpits should be repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is the time our message has become so relevant. For if the church will fall on their knees and we repent and call on heaven, God will hear our prayers. And in this dark hour of uncertainty, God is waiting on His people to cry out in avid repentance, and he will hear from heaven and heal our land. But today, we are very much like ancient Judah. When trouble comes, they simply would say, the temple of God, the temple of God, the temple of God are these. In other words, they're saying, but we have the temple. We have the temple. It will save us. But God said, you haven't turned from your abominable ways you still seek after other gods. You still bow to graven images. And yet you call upon the temple to save you. And Jeremiah said, amend your ways and your doings. 
and I will cause you to dwell in this place and do not trust in lying words. He reminds me of the young man last Sunday. Spring breakers descended upon South Florida and in Lake Boca, which is just inside the inlet from the Atlantic. It's a beautiful, perhaps one of the most beautiful scenes that you could ever see, but there were 2,000 spring breakers. They had tied their boats up into this massive circle. They were in a drunken stupor, and the authorities went to them, and they said to them, break it up, go home. One young man said, we're fine, we'll be okay, we're young and unaffected. And people say, well, well, how arrogant can that young person be? He's just repeating what he has heard people say for, for years and years. We're young. Or we're Americans. That doesn't, that doesn't happen to us. We're not like other countries. This would never happen to us. But we find ourselves in peril. And the question that must be asked is, why has the church stopped preaching against sin not a word about fornication, adultery, pornography, homosexuality, debauchery, dissipation. Hear what Jeremiah said was the cause of their condition. There are three phases that we need to hear to change our condition. And I want you to hear this very carefully. Three phases we need in America to change our condition. I pray for our authority I pray for the, the, our president, our vice president. I pray for all of our leaders. And they're doing what they can, but the answer lies in the Word of God. Hear me as I preach from the Word of God. The first point that I want to make is the prophet appearing. God called upon his prophet, Jeremiah. You see, God never sends judgment to a people without first warning through his prophets. The question I want to ask today, where are our prophets? Where are our priests who tell us, like Jeremiah, there's death in the city. There's death in the city. Amend your ways and turn back to God and he will heal your land. He will restore your people. God spoke to the nation of Judah through Jeremiah. God always raises prophets to the nations. If the prophets and the pastors and the priests were preaching the truth, God would not allow this pandemic. And let us understand. We say, are you saying that God is to blame? No, I'm not. I'm saying that we are to blame. Let us remember, it was we who said, we don't want you in our schools it was we who said, we don't want you in our government. It was we who said, we don't want you even on our currency. God will never be a gate crasher. He will never come where he is not wanted. In Elijah's day, the prophets of Baal and Molech and Ashtaroth were all prophesying blessings. Don't feel threatened by outside enemies. Take it easy. Rest in Zion. There's no threat to your safety. But they were lying to the people in so much that the people were even sacrificing their children to Molech in the Valley of Hinnon, which is also called the Valley of Slaughter. Are we really that much different? Since Roe v. Wade, we have killed over six million unborn children. Are we very, are we that much unlike Judah? And yet we say, we'll be fine. We always can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. I look around me and I don't see that happening. I'm sorry, but I don't see how America can pull itself up by its bootstraps. But God, but God, if we call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, you shall be saved. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it's not to the world, it's to the church. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves 
Seek my face. Repent from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven. It's not simply getting in a circle and singing kumbaya. It's getting on our faces and crying out to God and saying, God, we are in peril. We need your divine hand. Forgive us of our iniquity. Forgive us of our wickedness. The recent stimulus package that was passed, the bill that was passed one o'clock in the morning, this past Friday morning, Do you want to know what held it up? $2.3 trillion. When businesses were were going belly up. When parents weren't weren't sure they could even put food on the table. They were wondering what uh, our nation was going to do. Our president even came on television and said, we're working on a a deal right now to get money into the hands of business owners, families, people who are in desperate need. And yet there were politicians who wanted to fund, listen, in that same bill, they wanted to fund the National Endowment for the Arts. Does that sound familiar? Remember, It was they who put an image of Jesus in a jar of urine. That's the National Endowment of Arts. And to fund the NPR, National Public Radio. While businesses were about to go under and families can't pay their bills, Nancy Pelosi and her lackeys put carbon emission levels for the aircraft industry and adding money for the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts While your family was hurting and wondering, how am I going to keep my business together? And the president is trying to push this bill through. And politicians saying, no, we want all of our pet projects to go in this bill and held it up until 1 o'clock in the morning on Friday. But the nation is looking to the church. But all they're getting are moral pets talks and glib messages about how to live a happy life now. Live life to make every day like a Friday. Or they go to churches whose whose message is why I love the 80s. And they play Madonna and David Bowie in the house of God. Why? Because they know if they lower their standards If they don't preach against sin, they could fill an auditorium and fill their own coffers because they don't want to offend anyone. Hear me carefully. Not a word about repentance and sin or righteousness and judgment to come. I remember the late David Wilkerson preached a message after 9-11 called, The Towers Fell, But We Didn't Get the Message. I sat and listened to that message by David Wilkerson and I wept through the whole message because the truth that he was speaking is the very thing that I'm saying today. How many lives have to be lost? How many plagues must we endure before the prophets remember our calling? Where are the tears? Where are the contrition and brokenness for our sins? Before I came out this morning, Pastor Mark Olczewski came in to give me uh, some water and, and to tell me exactly what time I would be speaking. And we were talking and Pastor Mark said, could I pray for you before you go out, Pastor? And I said, I would love that. And in his prayer, he prayed one of the most beautiful prayers He said, God, let us approach your throne with contrition and brokenness. Let us come before your throne in humility. As he was praying, I knew that I had heard from God because he was literally preaching the very words dripping from my lips. We don't expect the lost to understand unless they're told. It's not all right to live any way that you want. Preachers quit trying to soft pedal the the truth of God's word and telling everyone it's all okay. 
It's okay the way that you live. It's okay because God loves everyone. So just come and live as you want to live. We'll get through this if we just stay home and stay six feet apart from the next person. Oh, how I wish that were true. But the truth of the matter is, for America, what's next? America is falling while its prophets are asleep. No message, no answers, no word from heaven. So what's next? Famine? Earthquakes? Another deadly pandemic? America has turned her back on God and the pestilence came while America slept. That was only the first point. The first point being the prophet appearing. And number two, the place addressed. Look at verse two. It says, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. God told the prophet Jeremiah to go stand in the gate of the Lord's house. Now, what would you think if you came to church of all nations or, or whatever church you attend and you see the pastor, not at the pulpit, but out in the front as people are coming in. And he is saying, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Turn from your wickedness. Repent. Turn to God. Turn back to God. Throw away these graven images and quit bowing to other gods. How would you feel if the pastor preached his sermon out in front of the gate of the, of the temple of God? He met the people as they came to the house of God. He met them in the courtyard before they could even enter the house of worship. It's a sham when the lost can come into the house of God and never feel conviction or remorse for their sins. Read Psalm 95, 8 through 10, where God reminds them, remember how your forefathers provoked me when they were in the wilderness, when I gave them the promise of, a, of the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, but you would not believe. You hardened your necks, you hardened your hearts, and you would not believe me. And now because of that, I'm going to leave you in the wilderness for 40 years. Although God in his mercy, as Moses cried out and said, God, if you leave us, we cannot go. And God led them for 40 years. Jesus went to the temple. He made whips of rope and beat the money changers. He turned over their tables of merchandise. And he said, you have turned my father's house, a house of prayer, into a den of robbers and thieves. Hear me, church, as the church goes, so goes the nation. Proverbs says, fools make a mockery of sin. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Listen carefully. Oh, that my head were waters. In mine eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men that I might leave my people and go from them for they be adulterers and assembly of treacherous men. Jesus told the money changers, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. This house, this sanctuary is a house of prayer. There should be a sweet aroma in this place. An incense of prayers wafting up into the very throne of heaven. But isn't it interesting how just weeks ago, just weeks ago, we didn't want God in our schools. We didn't want God in our courthouses. We didn't want God in our graduation ceremonies. Jesus was forbidden in the classrooms. And yet in the state of Washington, they brought in a transgender individual to teach some of the youngest in their school. 
When the parents heard what they were doing, that they were bringing in a transgender to teach their children, the parents rose up and said, we will remove our children from this school unless you take that man out of the class. And because of the pressure that they would lose money, and that was the only reason they took the transgender out of their school. Jeremiah said, I wish I, my head were waters so I could weep. Why? Because my people have turned their backs upon God. When we look at the places that I just mentioned, our schools, courthouses, graduation ceremonies, public forums, now those very places look like ghost towns. I was watching the news this week and I saw they showed LAX and there was no one. No one in that entire airport. Then they went to the walk of fame. Crickets. Crickets. All the famous names on the walk of fame. But no people in the streets. New York City looked like a scene from a city after radiation had hit it. No one in the streets. The largest city in America and no one in the streets. And we still believe if we just pull ourselves up, if we just get it together. My wife's cousin, David Hoskins, he put on his Facebook a couple of days ago, he said there were nine suicides in Knoxville, Tennessee alone. Nine suicides. People are looking for answers. Number three, not only the prophet appearing, the place addressed, but number three, the peril announced. Look back at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. God is saying, hear me. Look back at the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I set watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Just as they said when Jesus was ministering, we will not have this man to rule over us. When you hear the starlets and you hear the celebrities speak, I was reading about one of them this week. All that she could say was, I want what is best for me, for mine, for our. It was all about me. What makes me feel good? What I want to do. Not what God expects of me. Not what God says of the, of the nation and our churches. It's what is best for me. What I want to do to make me happy. Now read Jeremiah 7, 3 through 10. He said, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Beloved, this is the hour of recompense. As Scripture hath said, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. You're saying, Pastor, that there is a greater peril than the parable, peril that we're facing through this COVID-19. Yes. And that is that we're not preaching the truth. The churches are shut down today. And I'll tell you, it wouldn't matter for a lot of churches because the people wouldn't hear the truth anyway. They come in and the pastors tell them exactly what they want to hear. There's nothing in the Word of God about righteousness. Nothing in the Word of God about sin. Living together in fornication. Committing adultery. Indulging in pornography. Waving the banner of the LBGT. We need to understand, folks, it might be acceptable to America, but it's not acceptable to God. And we can point fingers at people all the time. But hear me, when we've asked God to get off the throne of our nation, then we have to put someone else there. And when we put ourselves there, look at the mess we're in today. No one can point a finger at God. We ask God to leave. 
We didn't want him in our schools. We didn't want him in our public forums. Now our hospitals are full. Our means are weak. Where is our help? Jeremiah says in chapter 8, verse 22, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? In America, where are the true prophets? Where are the true pastors? Where are the feel-good preachers that didn't want to offend? That's exactly right. They didn't want to offend. Do you know that the gospel is an offense? Do you know that the Bible says that many in the last days will turn on their own families because Jesus said, I have brought a sword of division for those of us who believe that this is the Word of God. It doesn't contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. And then there are others who have the temerity to actually go in, into the priesthood or go into pulpits and say that I've come out of the closet. I'm a homosexual. No one bats an eye any longer. They tell us, this is the 21st century. You need to just get with it. I remember standing in City Hall in West Palm Beach. They were trying to approve a measure to, to give uh, an L, the LGBT group a, a wider parameters. I remember waiting. Television cameras were there. And I stood up and I said, the Word of God calls that a sin. This is wrong. And God will not bless a city. God will not bless a nation if we go against the Word of God. And the mayor of the city, who is now a congresswoman, she said, this is the 21st century. This is not the Stone Age. This is not living back in time. This is the 21st century. And we need to be more open-minded. We need to embrace all sorts of people. But we do not embrace their sin. Where is your assurance of salvation without repentance? Where are the transgenders and the fornicators and the homosexuals that you said were okay? Where are the celebrity preachers who told millions, who are we to judge how people live? Are you sure you don't want to revise your message today? Church, we are in this mess because we turned our backs on God and said it's all right to live any way that makes you happy. Jeremiah 7, 4. Trust ye not in lying words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. And the seeker-friendly churches, you make a mockery at sin. When you bring entertainers in, you play secular music, you tell them to relax in Zion, take, it e take your ease in Zion. Nothing is going to happen to us because we're well healed and we have all that we need, just like the Laodiceans. We are well healed and in need of nothing but God says, no, you're neither hot nor cold. But because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. You false shepherds, you have indulged in lying words and false assurances. But hear me, today is the day of salvation. Repent and turn to the Lord our God while you can. In closing, I want to read to you two verses. Out of Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For those of you who are watching today, you say, Pastor, I don't have an answer. I don't know that the government can bail me out of the problems that I have. No, they can't. 
Without God, we are helpless. So you get a few thousand dollars. What are you going to do when that's spent? What are you going to do when the next pandemic comes or an earthquake or a mudslide or a fire or a tornado or a hurricane? Remember, we told God to leave. But it's the church's responsibility to pray, not the world. They're lost. They don't know the way. It's not their responsibility. It's the responsibility of the church. If my people who are called by my name, the people of God will pray. And if we repent, not pointing fingers at other people, if we repent, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I want you to bow your heads right now. And if you don't know Christ, today is a day of salvation. Tomorrow is not guaranteed for anyone. With God's help, yes, we will get through this. I've told all of our people, take anointing oil and anoint your house. Anoint the doorpost and the lentils and the entrance of every door. My wife and I, we went through our house and we anointed every door. I called my sister. We were talking and I said, last week I told the people they need to take anointing oil and anoint the house. And she said, she started chuckling. She said, it's funny, Tony and I, we just did that a few days ago in our house. She said, Tony followed me to every, my, my husband is my sister's husband. My brother-in-law we went to every door and we anointed every door and we commanded that disease not to cross the threshold God is a good God I'm going to ask you if you don't know Christ today today is a day of salvation would you pray this prayer with me if you don't know Christ and you say, I want to know his salvation. I want to be forgiven. I want to repent of my sins. Then pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended on high gave gifts to men, and He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And today I confess my sins. Lord, I'm a sinner. I need salvation. I need repentance. I need a reprieve from my sin. For His blood is sufficient. Lord, forgive me for my sins, and I declare You to be Lord and Savior of my life in Jesus name amen I'm going to ask P. Vic if he would come and close us in prayer amen amen church wasn't that a good word it was an amazing word thank God for a pastor that preaches the truth amen well it's time to close this service and I want to bless you I want to bless your homes but I want to remind you don't forget to follow us on Facebook Instagram. We have services online every Sunday at 11.15 a.m. Also, we have Wednesday night service at 7 p.m. online, and the pastors have a daily devotional at 7 p.m. If you'll bow your heads with me and close your eyes, I want to just pray a blessing over you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we are so grateful. We are so thankful, Lord God, for your love and your mercy and your grace. And Father, right now, I, I pray a blessing over every home that's watching this video right now, Father God. I pray a hedge of protection, the blood of Jesus over every household right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that we will be a light to this world, that we will shine Jesus wherever we go. We thank you once again for being such an awesome God, a loving Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, we love you. Have a blessed day.